Welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to go through a sketchbook tour of this, which is my latest sketchbook and nature journal. Um, I've got all sorts of ink and watercolor work in here. Um, I'm really excited to have finished this particular sketchbook because this is the largest sketchbook that I've ever actually finished front to back. Um, which may seem a little bit silly given that I am a full-time natural science illustrator and I sketch all the time. Um, but I used to be really bad at filling sketchbooks. Um, up until about two years ago I had never actually finished a sketchbook front to back. I would start and then I would decide that I ruined it and I would abandon sketchbooks and start new ones. And then the other thing is, I actually, although I do now finish sketchbooks regularly, I usually work in much smaller sketchbooks like this one. So this is an A5 versus an A4, which is the one that I just finished. Um, so you'll see this is half the size. So. I started this larger A4 sketchbook last year in April, so it's been about 10 or 11 months um, that it's taken me to finish this sketchbook, um, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So a little bit about the sketchbook itself. Um, this is a Stillman and Byrne Zeta series that, I'm, that I've just finished, um, and I've actually already got a replacement sketchbook that's identical. So you'll see the finished one is quite a bit thicker and dirtier. Um, but I really like these Zeta seri series sketchbooks because they are, um, they have very smooth paper, which is great for pen and ink work, but it's also a heavyweight 270 GSM mixed media paper, which can take quite a bit of watercolor on it. Um, and I do sketch in watercolor. So it takes everything that I can throw at it. Now it is a cellulose paper, not a 100% cotton, which is what I prefer for my finished illustrations. So it can't take quite as much scrubbing or layers, but that's the price you pay in sketchbooks. Um, so I would definitely recommend the Stillman and Burn Zeta series. I'll leave some links down below for where you can get these. Um, and now let's get into the video. If you're new here, my name is Lee. I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator, and on this channel, I share illustration tips and techniques and some insight into my daily life as an illustrator. If this is content you're interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. And now let's get into the sketchbook. So on the first page, on the left, I've got a graphite sketch of my cat, and on the right, I've got a page that I did for the Natural History Illustration 101 course with the University of Newcastle. Um, and I've got some ammonites and some muric shells. I was trying to explore the structure of spirals in nature. On the second page, I've got some more object studies. At the top, I've got a wasp's nest, and below I've got a wild turkey feather, which I started illustrating. Then I got bored, but I did paste in the reference, which I found at a local um, forest. On the right page, I've got a, an urban sketch, which I did, which I pasted in over a demonstration that I did for some students. On the left page again, I've got a paste in um, in this case, this is a glazing chart that I did for a class I was teaching. And on the right, I've got a tonal study based on a travel photo that I took in Tepoztlan in Mexico in 2015. Um, this study is done only in Green Appetite Genuine by Daniel Smith, and I was exploring how to create depth in a landscape study. Next, I've got um, back to the natural history illustration course, um, and this is a number of studies of Canada to geese that I did from life at a local park. Um, and so I was trying to learn how to sketch animals in motion. The next 
module for that course was botanical illustration, which should have been my strong suit, uh, but I was pretty rushed when I did these little studies um, of an orchid. Now we're skipping around in time for a, a little bit. Um, so here is a workshop that I did at the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators Conference in Washington, D.C. this past summer. I took a class on sketching birds from life. Um, so this was a barred owl and a western screech owl. Um, and the barred owl was juvenile bothering the western screech owl. So you can see an angry little owl. And then this one was moving all the time. Next are two different sketches, two different museums, two different capitals, uh, two different conferences that I attended. So on the left is from the Museum of Nature in Ottawa, Ontario, is a Carissodon, uh, which is an aquatic dinosaur. And on the right, I've got a winter skate from the Smithsonian Institute. Um, and that is also pen and ink. Um, and done from life while I was at the Janusai conference. Now we're back to that workshop that I showed earlier. Um, on the left is Carl, which was the juvenile barred owl who was bothering the screech owl. And on the right, I've got a crusted caracara. Um, and again, I was trying to figure out how to draw birds in motion and also just understanding birds at all. Birds are very strange creatures. Later that day, I went to the Smithsonian National Zoo. Um, so I had that morning workshop and then I had the afternoon off. Um, so I sketched a water dragon, um, but my legs got tired so I didn't really finish all the texture. And then I went off and sketched some poisonous dart frogs. On the left, I've got a sketch, a very, very rough sketch for a client work project that I did of um, elderberries for a jam label. Uh, the finished product looks nothing like this. I'll pop it up on screen. And on the right, I've got mixes uh, for blues um, mixed from green and purple, which I did for a purple cabbage leaf, which is on my blog, which I'll link down below. Then I went to Toronto for a few days, and so there are several days, several pages of this. So on the left, we've got um, a cat skeleton from a trip to the Ramsey Wright Zoological Labs at U of T with that I went to with the Southern Ontario Natural Science Illustrators on a field trip. And on the right, we've got a spread wing for a robin um, for a project, an independent project that I'm working on. I arranged my own visit to the ROM ornithology collections. So in the couple days that I spent in the ROM ornithology collections, I also got to sketch some um, study skins uh, of robins. So on the left is a male robin and on the right is a female robin. Um, and these are color studies um, primarily as well as some basic anatomy and there's some notes. On the left here, I've got some um, thumbnails that I was starting to try to figure out how I'm gonna lay out this piece. Uh, and some nest color references. And then on the right, I've got a sketch of a robin's nest, as well as you can see a little color thumbnail, color detail there. Then because I was in Toronto and enjoying myself at the ROM, I did actually go into the galleries the next day. So that's the uh, crazy critters that you see on the right. Um, some huge uh, prehistoric fish and turtles. Um, and I didn't want to draw on the left, so I just pasted in this very old Copic marker illustration that I don't want to sell because it's not light fast. On the left, I doodled some Queen Anne's lace in water-soluble carbon. 
and pencil. And on the right, I've got some glass gem corn in graphite and watercolor. And I was playing with some uh, composition with some circles. Now on the left, I've got some color mixing. So I'm mixing a variety of greens from PY150, which is my favorite yellow, and a number of blues. I have a blog post that I use this for, which I will link down below. And on the right is something very exciting. I started drawing these little pine trees, uh, and they're quite fun. I'll keep doing these. Um, it's really interesting to see the different shapes of different trees. On the left, I've got some more of the coniferous trees, um, the little ink sketches, and on the right, I expanded one of them into a larger sketch, a black pine. Now on the left, I've got more color mixing. Um, this is for that same Mixing Greens blog post, uh, which I'll link down below. And then on the right, I was really curious about fish anatomy. Um, fish have really strange anatomy. Their pelvis is all the way in their head. Um, and so I was trying to figure out how all of the fish bones all fit together. And so I did this study from internet reference. Now this is something that you've already seen in a past video, which was some studies for a cattails illustration, um, which I did in the studio before starting a finished illustration, um, but then the cattails exploded all over. So I taped some of the little explosion down below, but I never finished that. On this page, I've decided to study how to draw human heads because I've realized that I'm not very good at drawing the human head at all um, and I think that understanding these shapes will help me draw all sorts of things. Next, I went on a trip to the Cambridge Butterfly Conservatory with um, Urban Sketchers Waterloo Region uh, where I sketched some butterflies and I also sketched some of the environment with the waterfalls and plants and rocks. Um, so that was really fun. Then I went on a little day trip to the UW Earth Museum here in Waterloo um, where I sketched this crinoid. Um, now this was exhibited in a stairwell so that was, I was kind of uncomfortable and rushed for time while I was doing this so I tried to do a bit of a looser effect. And then on the right um, I sketched a prehistoric reptile called the Cactorinus. Um, also that same day. Also that same day, I started sketching an Irish elk. Now Irish elk are interesting because they are neither Irish nor elk. Um, uh, and also this is unfinished because I got tired. On the right, um, there's the first page from a workshop that I attended again with the Urban Sketchers Waterloo Region at Two Smiths Blacksmithing Workshop. So at the top, I've got a sketch of um, a public art project that they're doing over at this blacksmithing workshop, um, which is this spinal column bench thing that'll be installed actually just down the street from my house. And then I also was doing some environment sketches, trying to get some mood in and uh, some dramatic lighting, which has been a challenge for me. Oh. There we go. Um, the second half of that workshop was on drawing people in the environment. And uh, again, that's a huge challenge for me. So that's something that I'm working on. Um, and But I couldn't resist doing some fun uh, machinery. And then on the other side, I've got some color mixing. Um, I mixed some Amazonite with Amethyst. Uh, from the Primatech range to get some really cool teals and blues. Um, and down at the bottom, I'm thinking of replacing thalo green blue shade with thalo green yellow shade um, in my palettes. So I've been playing with some of the mixing. 
So this is more thalo green yellow shade mixing on the left. And then on the right, we're back to that Robin project that you saw earlier in this sketchbook. Um, and again, experiencing just how difficult birds are to paint. So um, one question I have for you is if you have any kind of references <laughs> or um, resources that you'd like to point me to for how to paint birds, I would really appreciate it because I really don't understand bird anatomy at all. So thank you in advance. Um, and then finally here we have a little grass, a decorative pampas grass and fluorescence which I did in watercolor using a glass nib pen, um, which is a new technique that I've been experimenting with. And, and on the last page, I've written so long and thanks for all the birds. I was going to write so long and thanks for all the fish because of some of the fish in this sketchbook, but then I realized that there were a lot more birds here. So um, that's it for the sketchbook. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell down below if you'd like to see more content like this. So, bye!